I'm Marty Stauffer. These are fossilized ammonites. They lived nearly 70 million years ago, long before man arrived. Even then, this animal was fully developed, beautiful in its symmetry, and it looked much like many of today's mollusks. Molluscans include not only the common snail, but also the more unusual squid. The incredible thing is the enormous variety of forms that derive from one basic structure. Entering their realm will take us to the fascinating world of seashells, and we'll meet some unique animals which survive only by eating mollusks. These well-designed invertebrates are the second most numerous animal group. Let's explore a multitude of mollusks. To many of us, the most interesting and familiar mollusks are the sea snails. Actually, it's not the animals we're familiar with, so much as their beautiful hollow shells. We collect seashells along the beach and marvel at their colors and designs. Yet most of us know very little about the animals that once inhabited them. A close-up look into the world of mollusks reveals creatures so strange and unusual, they seem to be more a product of science fiction than of evolution. Even a common pond snail takes on an alien appearance when viewed from below. While most mollusks have shells, not all animals with shells are mollusks. Crabs and their relatives, lobsters and barnacles, are crustaceans. Unlike mollusks, crustaceans have segmented bodies with jointed legs. The five classes of mollusks in North America are each distinguished by a certain combination of molluscan features. The word mollusk means soft-bodied, a characteristic they all share. A fleshy tissue, or mantle, surrounds their boneless bodies. In most species, such as these primitive-looking chitons, the mantle secretes a protective shell. Mussels, clams, oysters, and scallops are called bivalves because of their two-piece hinged shells. These appetizing creatures are by far the most valuable to man. The less common tusk shells, so named because of their shape, live buried in the ocean floor. Their shells were used by Indians for jewelry and for wampum, a form of currency.
The largest and most colorful class of mollusks are the snails and slugs. These adaptable animals live in both salt and fresh water and on land. Many mollusks are slow moving, but some are jet propelled, like the squid, cuttlefish, nautilus, and octopus. Their most prominent feature is their tentacles, which in most cases are used for capturing prey. It's no wonder most mollusks evolved a hard protective shell, since so many creatures find them so tasty. But for every defensive strategy in nature, there's a counter strategy. To dislodge an abalone, the clever sea otter pounds it with a rock. This tool using ability is relatively rare in the animal kingdom. Curious seals watch from above, as if interested in learning the otter's tricks. Studies show that mollusk shell is remarkably durable, as stiff as aluminum and as strong as fiberglass. Researchers are working to duplicate the molecular structure of abalone shell to create a concrete that can withstand a thousand times the impact of ordinary concrete. Mollusks are important items in the diets of many mammals, birds, herptiles and fish. They're also eaten by other mollusks. This predatory land snail feeds on slugs and worms, which it stalks with the voracity of a true predator. Caught in the deadly grip of the snail's radula, the slug is quickly devoured. Despite their lack of shell, slugs are not without their defenses. The bright yellow color of this banana slug is most likely a form of protective coloration. The banana slug is approximately the same shape and color 
as the decaying yellow leaves which litter the forest floor. So one explanation is that, by resembling a fallen leaf, the slug is overlooked by predators. This western garter snake is not so easily fooled. The defense strategies of molluscans are as extraordinary as the animals themselves. Banana slugs can grow up to six inches long. While their color gives them an edge against predators, their size is an even greater advantage. And the bigger the slug, the more mucus it can produce. A garter snake would have no trouble swallowing a smaller slug, but one this size is more than a mouthful. Without shells, slugs are vulnerable to predation, but their worst danger is dehydration, a problem they solve by crawling out from under rocks and logs, mainly at night or after a rain. Scallops have a means of escape that is unique among the bivalves. They move about by clapping their shells together castanet style. Their tiny blue eyes are sensitive to changes in light intensity in order to detect the approach of predators. Starfish are the scallop's biggest threat. Cockle shells have evolved yet another peculiar way to escape predators. Their long muscular foot evolved primarily as a means of burrowing into the sand. 
but it works equally well for fending off starfish. Humans are another major predator of mollusks. Oysters especially have been a prized food since man first made his living from the sea. Today, thousands of tons of oysters are consumed annually. Because of the huge demand, dredging equipment is used to scrape the oysters from their ocean beds. These were actually planted five years ago. Oysters are now farmed in much the same way as other crops. To supply the growing demand for these bivalves, seed oysters are sown in cultivated beds for future harvest. While oysters and other shellfish are merely a delicacy in human diets, there's one mollusk that's essential to the very survival of two rare birds. The freshwater swamps and marshes of Florida are home to the apple snail. It's the main food source of the limpkin, an odd-looking bird that's the sole member of a family believed to be a link between the rails and cranes. Limpkins find apple snails by probing in the mud with their long bills. Even though limpkins often supplement their diet with mussels, worms, and crayfish, their population has declined, along with that of the apple snails. These aquatic mollusks have lost much of their habitat to the draining and development of Florida wetlands. A cluster of delicate pink apple snail eggs holds the promise for the future of another bird, the Everglades kite, also called the snail kite. Its talons and sickle-shaped bill have evolved specifically for picking up snails and extracting them from their shells. Because of its total dependency on the apple snail, the Everglades kite lives a precarious existence. Only three to five hundred of these birds remain in the vanishing wetlands of central and south Florida. The Everglades is home to yet another distinguished mollusk, the Florida tree snail. The patterns of their shells mark them as one of the most beautiful land snails in the world. Each of these color types evolved on a particular tree island, isolated from the others by a sea of grass. To observe the more unusual activities of mollusks, it's not necessary to travel to the Everglades or to the seashore. Some of their most fascinating behavior occurs right in our own backyards. Here, a pair of common land snails unite to perform one of the strangest courtship rituals in the animal kingdom. Snail courtship consists of mutual touching and caressing. Once in a while, at the height of their sexual arousal, something truly bizarre happens. One snail stabs the other with a pointed blade called a love dart. The exact reason for this behavior is not known. Undoubtedly, 
It plays a part in the exchange of stimuli necessary for breeding success. Undaunted by the love dart, the snail revives and the courting continues. Snails are hermaphrodites, meaning they each have both male and female organs. With some snails, an individual can fertilize itself. With others, like this species, it takes two to tango. During copulation, each transfers a packet of sperm to the other. The actual fertilization and laying of the eggs is delayed as long as necessary until the moisture in the soil and the air temperature are ideal. After mating, there's always the chance that one of the snails will crawl away with the other's love dart sticking through its body. Several weeks later, 10 to 50 eggs are laid in a shallow hole in loose, moist dirt. Since the hind part of the snail's body is coiled inside the shell, the eggs are released from an opening on the side of its head. The mass of white eggs will be covered with dirt and will take two to four weeks to develop. The young emerge with a semi-transparent shell. They are fully equipped for life above ground. That is, if they can manage to crawl up to the surface. This one takes the easy way out by hitching a ride. A snail moves by sending waves of muscular contractions sweeping along the sole of its foot. To aid in locomotion, Glands at the front of the foot secrete a trail of mucus over which the snail glides. The hatchlings will reach adult size in one to three years. 
Since this species is vegetarian, the young snail is in no danger of being eaten by its parent. Apparently, riding on the backs of other snails is a habit learned early in life. Because of their shells, we know more about mollusks than most other groups of invertebrates. The centuries-old popularity of shell collecting has provided us with valuable information about their worldwide distribution. But more importantly, the evolution of their hard mineral shells has resulted in a rich fossil record of some 35,000 species. What we know about mollusks makes us appreciate nature's endless solutions to the problems of survival. What we have yet to learn about them makes us wonder if someday their solutions may benefit our own survival. When I stroll a beach full of seashells, I'm amazed at what infinite beauty and variety the world contains. Mollusks have been successful over hundreds of millions of years by virtue of their ability to adapt one basic design to so many needs. These lowly invertebrates can teach us to appreciate our own ability to adapt to new situations, a quality well exhibited by a multitude of mollusks. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, Enjoy our wild America.